But what we're going to do is we're going to go through, believe it or not, the next 10 chapters in the next 20 minutes and glean from them, well, what's going on here? Through the beautiful language and poetry, what's being said? Job has just told us, I don't know why I was ever born. I wish I were dead. Why does God let people who are suffering continue to live in their suffering? And Eliphaz shows us how not to counsel. Look at what he says right off the bat. Verse 2. If one attempts a word with you, will you become weary? Oh, Job, can I talk to you? I know you're, I know you're struggling, but man, can, can, I, can I speak to you? Or will it be too much for you? But who can withhold himself from speaking? But I got to tell you this. Okay. Oh, man. That was it. Surely you have instructed many and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words have upheld him who was stumbling and you've strengthened the feeble knees. Hey, you have been the righteous man who has counseled other people who are going through tough times. And man, you have just given them great counsel and strengthened them, Job. Man, but now it comes upon you and you're weary. It touches you and you're troubled. It's not your reverence, your confidence, and the integrity of your ways, your hopes. You know what he just said to him? Hey, you can tell other people how to endure this, and now it comes upon you, and you can't even take it yourself. That's what he just said. He said it very nicely and poetically. But that's what he just said. Job, you know, you know how to deal with this situation. You know you've counseled other people on this. Have you ever thought about someone, especially maybe a pastor or a great Christian leader who suddenly falls into sin, suddenly goes through some horrible experience and man, they kind of don't behave correctly in it. You know, they start whining and complaining. They start acting out in different ways. And what goes through our heads? What, wasn't he some big Christian leader? Shouldn't he know better than that? What you're saying is true. He should have known better. She should have known better. But they're human beings. You see, Eliphaz let it come out of his mouth. But we think it. We think it. And it flavors our response to reaching out and helping people in need. Paul says in the book of Ephesians, hey, you guys who are spiritual... If there's one among you who gets into trouble, and now I'm getting to paraphrase, but it's the heart of what is said there. Those among you who are in trouble. Is it Ephesians or it's Galatians? I don't know. I didn't write this down. Check on it and come back with me. But what he says is, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. It's Galatians. Restore such a one in a spirit of meekness and gentleness, knowing and looking to yourself that you're just as capable. You are just as much at risk. You see, we come to people who are struggling knowing that, you know what? I could be in your shoes. My grandmother used to have a saying. She said, there but for the grace of God go I. Man, she knew what she was talking about. We should keep that in our hearts. When we see someone who, who is hurting, the response is not, man, didn't you go to Bible study? Weren't you sitting in my Bible study for the last five years? It's not the response. The response is reaching out in the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. And in the wisdom and knowledge that God gives in how to deal specifically in specific situations in order to share the love, restoration, and power of Jesus Christ. In verse 7, he says, basically, those who sow trouble reap it. <laughs> oh, that's good to know for someone in Job's condition. Remember now, whoever perished being innocent... He just told him, well, Job, you deserve this. That's what he just said. Where are the upright ever cut off? Those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. Well, thank you very much. That makes me feel a lot better. 
And then he goes on and he talks about how he had a dream. And it was a frightening dream. And he saw this spirit and he was afraid. Oh, that's something to really share with someone on a hospital bed who might be near death. Come in and tell them about the scary dream you had the night before. This guy did not have any counseling training before this. It's not about you. When you come to share with someone in a mourning and, and, and tough situation, it's not about you. We all want to be able to identify with the person who is in trouble. But what we don't want to do is tell them, Oh, yeah, I went through that, too. And, you know, about three years ago, I was in the hospital and blah, 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 and me, 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 me. They don't want to hear about you. That doesn't give them any comfort. We think that we're, hey, you know, I'm showing you that I understand where you're coming from. I understand what you're going through. I've gone through it, too. And all they hear is Charlie Brown's mother. Wah, 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 wah. That's it. You're not giving them any comfort. Yes, absolutely. You want to stand in their shoes, just like Galatians 6 just told us. But you don't want to tell them and match them pain for pain and surgery for surgery and dilemma for dilemma. No. Shut up and listen and let the Lord tell you what to say. And what's the thing that this dream says? Basically, this spirit comes and says, how can a man be more righteous than God? He's basically telling Job, hey, look, this is important. So much so that this frightening spirit came and told me this, that who can be more righteous than God? Job. Here you are telling God what he should and shouldn't be doing. And we all know nobody goes through these kinds of troubles without deserving it. And who are you to say you don't deserve it? Hmm. He reinforces that. Verse 6 of chapter 5. Affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring from the ground. Hey, Job, these things just don't happen, okay? Hmm. And then... He goes on in verses 8 through 27 and basically says, hey, you should seek God. You should seek God. Now he's talking to a guy who is one-on-one with God. God's bragging about him. Eliphaz doesn't recognize or appreciate that. He said, man, you got to get yourself back with God. You know, because God is powerful and God can do all these things. And listen to what he says as he's talking to Job and encouraging him on seeking God. Look at verse 25. You shall also know that your descendants shall be many. He's talking to a man who just lost his ten grown children. And he's saying, hey, if you seek God, God will make your descendants many. How callous and cold to someone who has just lost their family, all of their children. You know, sometimes when we open our mouth to share with people, We say the stupidest things. And that's where Eliphaz is. I keep wanting to call him Elephant. Because that's the picture I have in in my mind of him. Eliphaz the Elephant just kind of coming in and going, Well, Job, you know, you deserve this. That's my comfort for you. Mm." You know, that's about what it would sound like to Job or to anyone else. 